ladies and gentlemen, the star of Politically Incorrect, Bill Maher. All right, welcome to our special uh, Memorial Day show. We're going to talk about Vietnam, and we have uh, four veterans here. First, he is a former sergeant in the U.S. Air Force, and he celebrated inspiration for the movie Good Morning Vietnam. Adrian Cronauer. Thank you. Thank you. She's the highly decorated president of the Women in Military Service for America Memorial Foundation, Brigadier General, U.S. Air Force, retired Wilma L. Voigt. General, how you doing? Thank you for being here. Not all good. He is a fighter pilot and the former premier of South Vietnam from 1965 to 1971, General Nguyen Cao Ki. Thank you for being here, General. Thank you. And a Vietnam War veteran and platoon leader, he is now lobbying explosives in comedy clubs around the country. He's my friend Blake Clark, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, I've been more bombing. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? Okay. Memorial Day. Let's talk about Vietnam. You were all there. I wasn't. I was in high school. I would have gone, but I had geometry. <laughs> Uh, gentlemen, let me start with you. General, you, uh, you say we should let it go. You say Americans, uh, you think, are a little too weepy about this. They make pilgrimages, they cry, and that we have a kind of a war syndrome. When they were soldiers, they were following orders, and we get a little too emotional about this. Is that true? Well, I think, you know, uh, war is ugly. Yeah. But, uh, As are some of the people who fight it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's not talking about you personally. Yeah. No, I was talking about you. Necessarily. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, and so, I mean, we've gone through this thing with Bob Carey. Uh, the country seems a little bit divided over that. Um, you think we should just say these guys did what they had to do and get over it? Well, uh... I I trust uh, Senator Kerry's story. In fact, uh, five or six uh, uh, companion of the senator uh, had the same account of what uh, really happened that night. So I think but one didn't. Yeah, but uh, we are in a democratic country. It's seven against one. <laughs> Uh, Bill, I don't know of a single, <clears throat> I don't know of a single Vietnam veteran who is not supportive of Bob Kerry. Uh, it's, it's a he si said, they say. And when you've got six people with one version and one person with another version, there's a presumption that maybe these guys have the real story. There's also something, you know, the false memory well, it's also the You story. get around the VFW and, and you're having a couple of beers with your friends every week and the story gets amplified on and embellished and pretty soon you're not sure where the embellishments are any longer and it all becomes the same story. Yeah, but it's also the story that the majority would want to have. Uh, I've never known there to be an alliance between the majority and the truth necessarily. Absolutely. Sometimes. Amen, brother. Yeah, and I think just because more claim the story that is the story that they would want to have put out, and I'm not condemning Bob Kerry either, doesn't mean that that's the truth, just because more of them say that. More of them would want to say that. The story that the one guy is telling, well, sometimes it's one guy who's lighting a candle to curse the darkness. I'm not saying he's... You know, they also had some civilian uh, Vietnamese, South Vietnamese, uh, who were of uh, questionable uh, background, could have been Viet Cong, who also said that, uh, you know, the one guy's story was the way it was, that they lined them up and shot them. I say this, uh, you know, I was a platoon leader. I was an infantry platoon leader. I was a lieutenant. Um, command and control is difficult in, in the best of, I mean, just to get to march around on the damn parade ground is, is hard. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, right. But when you're under fire and you're taking fire and you're, you're trying to uh, return fire and it's in the middle of the dark. And people in America don't know how dark it gets. 
you know, you, you might going to find out pretty soon in California. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, know, uh, you don't know. Yes, it's <laughs> true. We we have uh, we have street lights everywhere. That's right. That's it's right. true. You, we don't know about that. And, and it's so right. dark. I mean, I, w I was in places where you 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 couldn't see your hand in front of your face, and that's in the daytime. No, I mean, that was at night. Right? And. and uh, <laughs> well, there's, there's also the problem of the woman who was testifying or, or relating what she said happened as a witness. She was supposedly 62 years old. Her teeth were pearlier white than yours are. Now, a Vietnamese peasant woman is not going to have pearly white teeth. It's going to be dark and sometimes black from being beetle, beetle nut. You know what I'm talking about. And your point there is she was a plant. Teeth. She was a plant that they gave good teeth to? She was part of the Viet Cong. She the Viet Cong gave had, had a good dental program. <laughs> yeah, I had never. How do you think they I got have... those people to do what they did? That strapped themselves to a tree for three days. They had a dental plan. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we were fighting for. We wanted the same. Charlie's plan. got dental. <laughs> I am learning so much about the Vietnam War. I... It seems to me that the thing we have to be very, very careful of in this instance is that we're dealing with something that happened thirty some years ago. Yeah and people's memory of what they think they remember isn't necessarily accurate. Kind of and like already Holocaust. some of the people who've, who've spoken out and said, well, this is what I remember, you know, two weeks later somebody else is in, in there interviewing them and they're saying, well, no, that wasn't the way it was. I think there should be an investigation. But how could they? How could they come up with an answer? What are you going to investigate? Right. You, can, I mean, you, can, you can talk to the team members. You can try to find out any other people that were in the in, in the village that weren't killed uh, at the Which time. Which is going to be a hard task right there. Well, yeah. Unless I mean, they were know. Viet Cong or Viet Cong sympathizers. But cops, you, know, you know, cops who shoot people don't remember how many bullets they fired. The guys who shot Diallo. Yeah, but I think 40, the they were like, we shot two. him up against the wall and shot him, or if he was returning fire. Well, My whole thing is yeah. not that they kill civilians. I mean... You, 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 you guys kill civilians from the air. That's okay. You blow up Hiroshima, you kill 100,000 civilians. That's okay. But when a grunt, a guy on the ground kills a civilian, whoa, all of a sudden there's investigations. All I'm saying is there is a degree of guilt here. There is a degree uh, uh, of culpability. If he lined those ki people up, kids and women, and lined them up, and old people, and lined them up and shot them, then he is responsible and culpable. If they returned fire into a village that was firing on them, and some people, collateral damage is called, right. happened to be killed. I mean, we're getting ready to fry a guy or, or uh, you know, give him a, uh, uh, an injection that, right. that he calls it collateral damage. The whole thing is, is no, well, no, man, this no, is what no, makes no, me mad. This, is what, get, me this because, is what makes me mad. Because they, you know what? No one has the napalm, guts to say this. Okay. If they drop napalm on kids, that's okay. Nobody ever questions it. But if a guy on the ground, and I was on the ground pulling leeches off my ass, if I shot a civilian, then I'm up on charges, and it ain't right. They're still <laughs> My opinion is in any war, uh, no? uh, not only not only the soldiers die, the civilian casualties. Yeah. It happened. Yeah, but presidents the don't die. No. Generals don't die. The congressmen and the senators don't die. It's the poor civilians and the, yeah, they, no. who are the people I, I, on I the battlefield? Why, why, Minorities why, and the poor. That's why, who why, die. Why, why are you mentioning about general? I'm a general. That's what I'm saying. And you're still alive, ain't you? No, because it's, you it's, I'm lucky. Because it's my destiny. I, I, you know my record. I'm not a general who's, who sits behind the desk. You're a pilot. You're no? dropping bombs. Please, before I become fighter pilot, I'm serving as a platoon leader. Where? In Hanoi, in, in North Vietnam. Fighting Are you the, for the North Vietnamese? No, fighting the... No, <laughs> fighting Indian. the... No. no. <laughs> but don't, don't, don't tell that the, the general officer... Well, you were a general, you were a president. If there were... Pre Let me tell you this, pal. If there were presidents out there, I'll... F you know what? If we want to go to war, hit Bush out there to lead us. I'll follow him. <laughs> I want to talk about that, but I got to take a commercial. Yeah. Well, it's uh, Memorial Day. President Bush visited Arlington National Cemetery. Uh, not to remember, he's thinking of drilling there. 
Now, Memorial Day is a time to remember, to honor our veterans. A lot of them have a hard time of it. Uh, their pensions are small, their health care is substandard, and some are reduced to appearing in degrading TV commercials with Britney Spears. You were mentioning President Bush. Huh? You mentioned President Bush. Going, yeah. Okay, you say you follow him to battle. Here's something I do not understand. Please explain this to me. You're a general. I don't know who you voted for, but most of the military voted for President Bush, backs President Bush. There's one guy clapping for President Bush. Uh, I have no idea why the military would back someone who is a draft dodger just like any other draft dodger. And I don't say that as a cheap shot. I'm just saying either you went to war or you didn't. No one had to pull strings to get into Vietnam. I think I'm right about that. If you wanted to go, you could have. Clinton didn't want it to go? Okay. Lots of them didn't want it to go. Bush is no better. Why does the military like him? Let me help you try to understand it. First of all, there is a qualitative and substantive difference between the two because Bush did not lie to get out of... Yes, he his did. Service. No, he did not. Secondly, and more importantly, after eight years of the Clinton administration, the military in this country has been decimated. We have 12,000... Different issue. We Different have... issue. No, these We're are what the people are looking at. We're talking about 1969. These are what people are looking at and why they want Bush, why they By the uh, way, respect they him because voting, he has promised to correct They weren't voting between Clinton. They were voting between Al Gore, who, who wanted a bigger military budget than George no, Bush. They didn't believe him. They didn't believe him. Well, here, because of the legacy. Like, the real reason, Bill, that they support Bush is because I was a national vice chairman of Veterans for Bush and spent most of last year traveling around the country telling them to vote for him. He's That's a draft why. dodger. Like, why is, why is, why is the, getting they, your dad to pull strings so you go into the National Guard and fly an obsolete plane that will never get sent overseas, why is that not draft dodging? Here's the deal. Because the people in the military recognize that he wore the country's uniform and they don't see it that way. They're I wrong. look at it like well, this. Here's the, here's when I was very when I was to me, you what? Know, what? because what? you asked uh, why the veteran um, uh, American military support uh, the president. Yes. Well, my opinion is the president of the United States is at the same time commander-in-chief of the armed forces. And I support whoever my commander-in-chief. Yeah, but he no, wasn't... support doesn't mean I have admiration for right. him. Uh, but that's a different story. You know, I'd like to... But yeah, as a soldier, me, me, you know, my you duty know, and responsibility is to obey and support the commander-in-chief. Even before he's the commander-in-chief. <laughs> <laughs> Historically, uh, when you look at the, at the military, there's been a perception for some years that the military does better in Republican administrations than it does in Democratic administrations. If you look at the record of how the dollars flow, that isn't necessarily the way it is. Mm -hmm. If you uh, also, uh, for whatever reason, the senior leadership of the military has historically been Republican. And I think that that had a bearing, too. But you simply can't avoid the issues that Adrian pointed out, and that was uh, the... Clinton's record before he went in, the, the enormous play that was made on that. Because as far I, as I'm, I'm concerned... I'm not asking the military to back Bill Clinton. I'm just saying that George Bush and the other people who avoided going to the war are no better and no different. So don't put him up there on a pedestal like he is some sort of a hero. He you can sit just there and like say anybody that else. You, want, Bill, you but either went to the they war see it in the military. You either went to the war or you didn't. The military doesn't That's why see it we that give way. Bob Kerry like, a pass. Like That's why I won't judge Bob Kerry because I never went to war. So I can't say what I would have done. Okay? And it's the same thing. I went to war and I can't say what I would have done. <laughs> <laughs> because because you never know what you're right. going to do. You never, it, some days, you, you know, like some days you feel like going to work, some days you don't. <laughs> Same thing in combat. I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, right. that's serious. Hey, some days you just, eh, I don't feel like doing it. You know, uh, yeah. uh, you guys go ahead. I'll, and I'll George Bush didn't feel like doing it any day. Like oh, I said, you if, he, if you wanted to go to Vietnam, Oliver Stone was a rich kid. He yeah. went. Right. He wanted to go. Lots of the people volunteered, most of them. Well, yeah, Why Gore, didn't... Gore went, but then he got some job where he was in the rear with the gear. At least he, he was in the, the theater of war. Do you yeah. know that in a class of 1,100 at Harvard, 12 people out of a class of 1,100 at Harvard went. Al Gore was one of them. Yeah, I, I admit, he wasn't carrying a rifle, but it was a lot worse. Uh, 
to be in Vietnam than it was to be in Texas in the Champagne Division of hey, the Air nobody, National nobody, Guard, which is what... There was no Viet Cong in Texas. There was no Viet Cong in Texas. He kept them out of Texas. He, I mean, they, I, knew, I just, they knew if he came to Texas, he'd execute them. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you're I'm trying to approach it logically, and just as people did and did not and opposed Clinton, it was not always logical. Okay. The same is here. That's the fine. military sees Bush as more to their liking. That's okay. That's the fine. generals do because no, oh, the military the generals generally. do because they're going to get the Osprey. They're going to well, get the all those so things. The generals toys, do, but it's not just the generals. No, the it's the, the rank, twelve thousand, right. the twelve thousand yeah. lower enlisted men yes. who are still living on food stamps. Yes. And Bush comes in and says, "I'm going to put a stop to that. I'm going to raise your Let's living see standard. If he does. I'm going to give Let's you the proper medical care." Let's, Let's see, see if he does. But he promised it, and that's why they voted for it. Yeah, he promised a lot of things. Sure. Yeah. All I ask for of a president is be smarter than me. Right. I, I tried to get out of it. I tried. I couldn't. I ended up over there in the bush, right. pulling the leeches. I don't think Bush is smarter than me. Right. I don't think Bush. I think right now. I think right now Reagan knows more than Bush. <laughs> okay, Reagan, I'll take it. <laughs> Talking about the president, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the guys who uh, saved our spy plane got it to the ground anyway, uh, there, the Chinese incident a couple of months ago. They uh, were given the Air Mer Medal of, for Heroism, the Meritorious Service Medal. The captain got the Distinguished Flying Cross. Some people have said, uh, do they deserve all these medals? I would be in that camp. Not that I didn't think they didn't do a great job. Not that I don't think when you're in the military to begin with, you're doing more than all of the rest of us. However, doesn't heroism have to include some idea of selflessness, of doing something where you make a choice. I don't think they made a choice, because what were they going to do? Not land the plane if they could? They well, did a great job getting the plane on the ground. That was to save their own ass. That's different than people who make a choice to do something at great personal risk that might get them killed. I think there's, some, others. I think there's something more to giving medals than, than that. And to me, this crew deserved everything they got, and maybe a little bit more. They were confronted with a situation that was unlike uh, anything that most up, in fact, even the military that many people but what have What did they do that was selfless? The, the, the they saved the, the plane. They no, they didn't. The Chinese, no, they did. the communists got it. Selfless would well, have been to ditch it into the sea right. at their expense. Eventually, I think we'll right. get that plane. What's that? You I think we'll get that. Point. It doesn't matter. The Chinese but communists the already got everything off of it. All right, here's the, here's but what they did, what they did was heroic. They rose no. above no. and beyond. No, they did. It doesn't matter because, because, because heroics is only one reason you get medals. There are two other good reasons. One is just for doing a damn good job of whatever and you they did. did. And thirdly, yes, they did. Woody Allen said 90% of life is showing up. And sometimes you get medals for just showing up. Yeah, but is that I, right. I served in Southeast Asia and in Vietnam. I got medals for that. Despite what it showed in the movie, I kept my nose clean for four years, and I got a good conduct medal for that. There are all kinds of reasons. But should you get medals yes. just for showing the up? The Distinguished Flying Cross is second only to the Congressional Medal of Honor. And he I, don't think, a lot of I don't think that flying. pilot deserves the Distinguished Flying Cross. I don't either. I don't yeah. think, I, there were guys who flew missions in World War II that came home on a wing and I mean, bailing wire holding sure, their they planes. They didn't get distinguished. Let me give you, let me yeah, give you, but he did a, a good job of it. Yeah, but let me give you a different example. License pilot, I'll tell you, that was a hell of a fine job of flying. It was a fine job right, of give flying, a hell but of a, a hell of a good job flying metal, but me, not the distinguished flying. That's what the okay. distinguished cross is. No, it isn't. It is. It is. Wait a second. Everybody's Fowler. talking about Pearl Harbor. After Pearl Harbor, a few months after Pearl Harbor, the Doolittle Raid. We needed something. That they knew they weren't coming back. They knew they only had enough fuel to make the raid over Japan, and then they're on their own. They could not get back to the aircraft carrier. They would have to ditch in China somewhere. What'd they get? Okay, that's heroism, knowing you can't come back. They got an air medal. No, for, for well, fine. I, don't I, think I, this I agree with you. Knew they were going I, I, I don't think it's uh, heroic uh, actions. But uh, as pilot myself, and. Uh, uh, I understand what happened, but uh, all I can say is the, the crew, and especially the pilot, a uh, real uh, qualified pilot. Oh, yeah. yeah and, I'm not saying and, they don't and, and I agree with you, not distinguished flying cross, right. but 
Citation or Air Force Commendation yeah, Medal. Not, not the Distinguished but Flying again, you, know, you cheapen. It's okay. just like it's just like they're, uh, the Rangers got all upset because they're issuing everybody black berets. They had to earn those black berets right. before. Now everybody's given it. And now they got the thing. They got the little badges, the Rangers. Any Rangers out there? Yeah, right. I, they, uh, <laughs> they had to say earned, not issued. I mean, it, you know, I got I got a few attaboy badges and been there badges, but I earned them. You know, right? You had those leeches on your ass. <laughs> I got a leech. All right, on I gotta take a break. We'll be right back. All right, we salute all our men and women in service tonight on this show, and tomorrow we have Representative Harold Ford Jr. and Shannon Reeves. Thank you, folks.